Hey guys, how's it going? It's Nathan here. Today I'm going to be bringing you a tutorial on how to survive the bear market. And some of you may be asking, how do I survive the bear market? Well, simply put, you short the market. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over the indicators to show when the trend is reversed. Um, also on exchange, how to actually short and also how to actually figure out your position sizing. So first things first, what I like to do is try to identify when the trend has flipped. And the way that I generally like to do it is by using EMAs or moving averages. In this case, I'm going to be using a 13 and a 21 EMA. And when you, to identify the, uh, the trend reversal, you look for moments where the, EM, the slow EMA is below or above your fast EMA. So my fast EMA is going to be the one with the lowest value, so 13. If the 13 EMA is above my 21, which is my red line, it's going to be a bullish trend, okay? When they cross over and the fast is below my slow line, that's a bearish trend, okay? So by looking at the chart here, we identify there's multiple times and moments where this trend has flipped. So focusing on just price action around this major trend reversal at the all time high, just for educational purposes, let's go to here. All right, perfect. So now we're just looking at this this price action as if that's the current price action. We're gonna identify that the EMA, although it has just crossed bullishly in terms of EMA structure, we do have a major trend, bullish trend here, which has actually lost its all its momentum because price structure has kind of been broken quite a many, quite a few places actually. So even though that the EMAs have just crossed over, you're still trying to identify a reversal. So using price action basics that we've been learning through other tutorials, you're gonna be looking for a lower high to be printed, okay? Like that. That is going to be the bread and butter to trading reversals, whether that be low time frame or even higher time frame. This is what you need to look for. You need to look for EMA flips and also price structure to show you that price is not actually going to expand above the recent high, rather it will actually reject and break down. So looking at the, this price action here, you can see that currently, you know that your invalidation level is going to be above the previous local high. Okay, that's the wrong little note, there you go. So our daily invalidation would be closing above the 4,800, okay? However, we've identified that the trend is bearish albeit that there is a current little bullish crossover, but we know that the actual main trend has lost its steam and therefore we're gonna to start to look for shorts. You may be wondering, well, why don't we just quickly enter a short when price reaches up here? The reason why we don't just jump into a short just based on price reaching or retesting a certain level is because we have no confirmation from our technical indicators that the price will reverse or break through. That's mainly gambling. So if you're not actually using other forms of confluence to make a trade, you're basically taking a gamble on what the price will do. So what I like to do when it comes to scalp trading or even swing trading, it doesn't really matter, in my opinion at least, you always wanna drop down to at least, or sorry, at maximum, one quarter of the time frame where your trend reversal has been indicated on. So for instance here, I'm on the daily time frame, and I wanna make an entry based on the fact that the daily trend is bearish and price is retesting a major level. So in order for this to be the case, I've gotta drop down to at, at most the six hour time frame. So with our current price action, we can see that price is currently retesting this high. And we want to confirm that there is a price structure reversal in terms of the higher time frame such that it allows us to find an entry on a lower time frame. So at the moment, we still haven't gotten that lower high. Okay, so we've got to play it through, see what happens. So price actually comes off the top, has a huge wick down to what, 3,400, which is about a 15% wick, which is actually quite unprecedented. It's quite a lot. Um, but now that we have this, we've actually confirmed that, hey, look, we have a higher high here, and now we have printed a lower high. So this must mean that the trend is reversing. Now that we have identified that the trend is reversing on the higher time frame, let's drop down to our six hour time frame and try to find an entry. 
Now I'm going to turn off my EMAs because I no longer need them because I know that the daily time frame is bearish. I'm going to look at this price structure here and try to identify levels in which I want to enter a short on. And the way I generally trade and the way I've kind of been teaching you guys to trade is to trade based on market structure breaks and also like the trend reversals and whatnot. But looking at this, we can see that immediately this is a beautiful MSB level. It, albeit it's actually quite high and dislocated from the current price section. So I'd actually be quite um, hesitant to assume that price reaches all the way up there. So at the moment, what I'd be looking for is a resistance around this 4,300 level. I'm going to make that a pivot point because that's a potential level in which the price might pivot and change direction. But I'm not going to make an entry at a pivot level unless I'm really confident that the price is going to actually reverse from there. Quickly having a look at OBV and RSI, we can see that for some reason, we can actually see future RSI here, which doesn't really make too much sense. But we can see that even though price broke the recent lows, OBV is still quite bullish. And that kind of indicates to us that we're going to get an impulse to retest a higher level rather than just falling straight back through. So I'm going to prepare ourselves to actually make an entry, a short entry up at the MSB. And firstly, I want to draw out a little zone in which price can reverse that because it's better to have a zone which encapsulates a larger region so that you actually can look for trend reversals within a larger area than depending your entire trade on a retest of an exact like 4496.47 level, for instance. So now that I've done that, I'm going to use my actual short tool, short position tool, which is actually here on the left hand side. It's about the six uh, icon down. Hit it, you get the short and long position. Hit the short position because we want to enter a short. I'm going to click at that MSB level um, and just to quickly run you through what this actually tells you. So first things, pardon me, first things first, you can see that there's actually a little text in the center here. The open profit and loss is going to be based upon a value you give for your, um, your entire actual portfolio. This is a value that can be whatever you want, but this will give you an idea of what your potential profit is or whatnot based upon this trade you're taking currently. The quantity is how much your risk allows you to enter a short with. So for instance, um, actually I'll go into that a tiny bit later, but that's just your quantity. That's your actual position sizing that's been calculated by TradingView. So that's the value that you want to enter your trade with. And your risk to reward ratio is basically the ratio between your stop loss and your take profit level. Um, usually it's the percentages. So for instance, this is a, my stop loss is 6.22% away from my entry position. And my target is 6.22% away from my entry position as well. That's why it's a one-to-one. -one. Now notice what will happen if I drag my stop loss down further closer to my entry and closer to the recent high, which is going to be where I place my stop loss for this trade because I like to use recent price action as a indicator of key structural levels. So this is actually going to be a beautiful validation for our trade because this is a really nice clear resistance level where price is just immediately broken down from. So that's going to provide us with a solid invalidation level. And you can see now that my quantity or my position sizing for the trade has actually increased to 0.6 Ethereum. Now, my target, if you look at the same value, so the quantity, your sizing, it doesn't change depending on where you put your take profit. And that's because your quantity or your position sizing is only based or calculated based off the amount of money you wish, you wish to risk in a trade. Now, if you double click this short position tool, you'll see that you can actually put in an account size, which is perfect. If you have a $1,000 account, you just put in $1,000. Um, you can actually change the amount of percent you want to risk in a trade. I like to have at most 5% risk on a given trade. That is to me way too much. It just depends if I'm, if I'm doing swing trading, I generally have a higher risk only because the position takes a lot longer and generally, um, 
sorry, the position takes a lot longer to reach take profit levels and therefore you have a lot of data to support your entry. So you can actually risk more because you're more confident in the position. Whereas for scalping, even 2% of your account or even less than that per trade is probably wise. Um, you can also do 2.5% if you'd like. Just really depends on your type of risk to reward. But I, I personally would never recommend going above 5% for any trade. It's not worth it, even if you're like 100%, because at the end of the day, you no one can predict the market entirely. So just cover your ass, manage your risk accordingly. But anyway, so this is actually a really good way to actually do the position sizing because TradingView just calculates it all for you. Um, and you can change like the style colors if you'd like. I don't really want to touch anything else. I like the actual default settings for it all. But now that we've actually fine-tuned our short position tool on our chart let's see what happens with price so i'm actually going to get rid of my indicators because i know that this is going to be a perfect trade for me because I'm quite confident in my abilities so price comes up let's see what happens do we get a retest of the high we do perfect literally a perfect retest of the msb level but you see the reason why I like to do zones and this is actually a very clear reason as to why it's good to do zones is because you can see there's a little bit of a front run here so the wick actually front runs the actual msb level by like what's that three to four dollars something like that something very very small like 0.001 percent or something like that um so if you're using fixed levels to your actual positions you're not going to be able to enter a trade most of the time if you're based off like a fixed entry level. That's why it's good to ladder into positions. So I have this gray zone. I would have actually set sell order down here at the low, then at the midpoint, at the high of the zone as well. And then that way you get an average position. So that's called dollar cost averaging. You get an average position um, into your short. You might not get the entire position filled, but that's fine. You're just... The idea is to be consistent over time and consistency is DCAing and managing your risk accordingly and taking the right consistent trades based on a good strategy. So I'm actually just going to drop this down a tiny bit only because I would have gotten my first entry and also just would have gotten the MSB um, entry as well. So my first two entries would have been filled. My last one, which would have been at the top, wouldn't have been filled, which is a bit of a shame, but that's that's life. But now I'm gonna flip on up to the daily time frame to look for where my support levels are because obviously I'm sure I'm trying to trade. This is a high time frame trade, and I'm gonna be using the daily time frame for it. So I'm going to identify local levels of support based on this higher time frame, and I've identified that there is actually a local support here. Ooh. There's a local support here based on price, and I can create a range as well if I'd like. Um, generally it's the smartest way to do it and I'm going to set my take profit just in the mid range of there I will probably take profit at the top of the box as well just like we did with our entries you take profit at the top middle and bottom as well um, you can always leave like 25% of the short in if you'd like just run in case price keeps going down which is always a good uh, good habit to get into especially when you're trading a trend like this is just like a perfect trend reversal. So the trend will continue even more bearish over time. So it's nice to have a entry where you can actually just keep following the price as it goes lower. So I'm gonna continue this out. Boom, we can see that our entire short position was filled. We, that was a, um, a 2.5 R to R trade, which corresponds to a hefty 10% or 9.76% short. So generally, that's how you short in a trend, okay? Longing is the inverse of this, basically. You're just going to be looking for market structure breaks and wait for retests and then long the retests, just like the same way we did here. We, you identify structural positions or structural um, support levels where you can set your invalidation or your stop loss below, and then you can ride the trend up and take profit at key um, resistive levels if the price action has historic price resistances okay 
But now that I've gone over how to actually short with TradingView, let's jump over to an exchange now and I can show you actually what each of the settings are and actually how to effectively set yourself up to properly short on an exchange. Alrighty, so now that we're actually on an exchange, disclaimer, I'm using Bybit for this example. However, I highly suggest given the current situation with like FTX and other, other exchanges, it's best to use your main largest exchanges like Binance or Coinbase. Um, Bybit, in my opinion, is still fine, but um, I just highly suggest don't use any of your third, like your extreme third, fourth party exchanges, which are small in liquidity and all that, because you run the risk of potentially losing your money as well. And we, as investors and as people who like to be financially secure and manage our risk, it's important to diversify your funds. So make sure you don't put all your all your finances in one exchange, especially a small exchange. Make sure you keep majority of your money either off chain, so in your account, because if you don't put your money in your account, it's not really your money. Um, a lot of people have actually learned this the hard way. You can have all this money on exchange, but if you leave, for instance, a stop loss, if you sorry, if you don't, if you take a position, you don't put a stop loss in, you end up li uh, liquidating your entire account, and then you're like, oh wow, there goes all my life savings because um, I left my I left a trade open and I left all my market on exchange, or all my money on exchange, and now I don't have anything in my account. So make sure just diversify your risk, move your money around multiple exchanges if that's the way you want to do it, but also remember to pay yourself and note and have the mentality that it's not really your money unless it's actually in your tangible bank account, okay? That's just my PSA. Um, I think it's really important for people to remember that, especially in times like this with the market. And just in general, like, just always be, it's better to be safe than sorry, okay? But I digress. Let's have a look at the exchange now. Let's figure out what we wanna do. So the idea is in order to long and short the market, you need to be using derivatives trading. And there's multiple different options here. As you can see, there's USDT. Um, there's also copy trading, which is you basically copying someone else's trades. Um, there's USDC perpetual, USDC options, um, and a few other ones as well. I'm not gonna really get into these ones down here, but the most important thing to note is that options trading is different to your perpetual derivatives trading. Options are when you're doing call and puts um, derivative, oh sorry, your perpetual contracts are when you're doing longing and shorting, okay? You can do use these uh, options if you'd like, it just depends on what you feel more comfortable with. It's a bit different because you have like expiry for contracts and all that. Um, and yeah, I'm not gonna get into the finance lingo behind it, but I generally keep to perpetual contracts only because I like that. I like the setup and I like how easy it is to actually understand and just you're in and out on trades all the time with it, it's perfect. So now that we identify we want to do perpetual contracts, let's actually just click the option here. And once we click the option to actually do USDC, uh, USDT perpetual contracts, it's going to come up with a chart of BTC or any other crypto asset or asset for that matter. And if you hover over the actual nameplate here on the left hand side, you can actually search up any crypto that they actually hold on this exchange. They also might have traditional markets if that's what they support. Just really depends on what uh, exchange you're using. Um, but in this case, I'm gonna go actually click Ethereum or even better, I'll just search up USD, uh, ETH USDT. Note that the W between ETH and USDT is uh, Ethereum wrapped. Don't trade that. And that's not what you really want when you're trying to trade Ethereum. So. Now that we've got the page in front of us, there's actually a few things you need to know. First things first, take a look at the top right hand corner. This is where you're going to be doing all your longing and shorting. This is the most important thing when it comes to entering a trade. There's two types of margins that you can use. There is cross margin and isolated margin. Now, I am one of the biggest advocate for never, ever, ever, ever using cross margin. Net, like, believe me, you may think it's fine. You may be able to manage your risk with cross margin. Don't. I have liquidated $40,000 accounts because one morning I entered multiple trades and I 
did enter, uh, sorry, I did place a stop loss in for most of the trades, but I forgot to place one, one stop loss for one of my trades. And because I forgot, a few hours later, I come back to a notification on my phone saying, your account's been liquidated, or you've had liquidation calls and stuff on your account. And I checked my account and I got entirely liquidated because it was a black swan event where I think it was like China's power grid shut down. And so the crypto market absolutely tanked and I lost all that money. And it's happened to so many people time and time again because they're using cross margin. If you don't know what cross margin is, cross margin is when you actually have your available balance at the moment. Mine's zero because I actually don't have any money on this exchange, but um, you have your entire portfolio. Say you have a thousand dollar account and you enter a short position using 10x leverage for longer short, whatever it is. Um, and when price goes against you, so you're in the negative and your position requires margin. So your the exchange requires you to have a certain amount of money to actually fulfill the order and actually maintain the position. That's how they cover their own risk when it comes to um, offering you leverage and whatnot. They can actually access that entire $1,000 account using Cross to actually fulfill the requirements of that open position if you don't put a stop loss in. So say you wanted to risk $50, but you forgot to put a stop loss in and price keeps going down against you. And obviously you don't realize this because you thought you put a stop loss on and whatnot. You can actually liquidate that $1,000 account if the price actually goes down far enough because the exchange is like, oh, well, they didn't put a stop loss, which is fine by us because they can still fulfill the requirements because the cross the, we have access to their entire account in order to make or to cover the downside of this trade. That's bad. Not very good for you because you now have the ability to lose all that money. Isolate a margin using a specific amount of margin right here. Specific amount of margin. You dictate what that margin is based on the amount of leverage you choose and also based on the position sizing. So if you have a larger position size, say you wanna buy a 10 Ethereum position and that's gonna cost you quite a lot of money if you're just doing 1x leverage. And therefore you need to come up with a lot of margin to cover that. But by using leverage, you can actually do 10x leverage. So you only, pardon me, you will only require 10% of the entire amount in order to cover that leverage or to, in order to cover that 10 Ethereum short or long position. That's kind of what the leverage is. Um, in my opinion, leverage doesn't really matter. People, a lot of people hate high leverage um, and there is a reason for it because if you have small position sizes, you don't want to have high leverage because that means that your margin, your position margin is very small. And so say that I have a, let's look at the current chart here anyway. So say I have, I want to enter a short here. Just say I want to enter a short and my stop loss is going to be $8 away from where the current price is and take profit is going to be wherever it is. doesn't really matter. If I use, if I only want to enter a 1x, so sorry, a 1 Ethereum short. So that means that the amount of money I'm risking on that trade is $8, but, um, my margin is like $7. If price goes $7 in this direction, it's going to close out the amount because you don't have enough position margin. You don't have enough margin um, to actually cover $8 worth of losses. Okay, so that's why it's really, it, it, it doesn't matter with high or large positions in my opinion, margin size, oh sorry, leverage size. Um, what really matters is your risk and also the sizing of your position. So larger sizes, larger size positions, you can use larger leverage. If you want, I generally keep it to two, three X. That's about it in my opinion, because I don't really need to use large margins. Um, but don't go 50 X or hundred X because as it says, there's a high risk of immediate liquidation because if you're not utilizing the ability, the hundred X ability, then your one Ethereum position only needs to move like 10 bucks or less than that. And you've liquidated that margin or whatever it is. Okay. So generally I'd like to, I recommend keeping 
leverage between three and 10%. Um, you should be able to have enough money to cover that otherwise. But yeah, so once you actually have selected isolated margin plus that um, your leverage is about 3x or whatever it is, low leverage, not higher than 25. 25 is too much uh, for most cases, especially if you're starting off in the space or you're starting to do derivatives trading. Next thing to do is to decide whether you want to open or close a position. And in this case, you always want to do open. I don't ever actually use this close tab at all. I only will actually adjust it based on the, um, the stop loss and take profit levels. And also it has an option to usually it says here, it says market slash um, limit sell. So you can actually close the trade out at a specific level um, if you want to that way. But looking at this, you have a limit buy, you have a market buy, and you have a conditional buy. First things first, limit buy is you're setting a price limit. So I want to enter a trade here at 120, oh, $1,227. So I would put in here 1227 The amount of Ethereum I want to short or long with is going to be one Ethereum worth. It will tell you how much it's going to cost you based on your leverage amount. Um, so it's going to cost me 407 US. So you need to have $407 in your account at least in order to fill this, fulfill this position. You can actually buy, um, well, sell short with a take profit and stop loss because we're going to be selling short. So I want to take my take profit to be maybe about 1210. And my stop loss is going to be above 12, um, 1230, just say, because that's just up there. And now that that's all sorted, I can actually press open short and that would open a short position for me based on my limit order. So the entry price, my take profit and your stop loss. This is when you go back to your actual chart and you quickly check what levels you've set on the chart for your take profit and stop loss at and also your entry levels. Um, that's when you can input those actually directly here. And once you do that, you can actually just forget about the trade because you've set a stop loss, you've set a take profit, and that's all you need to do now in terms of on exchange. There are other things important here with your actual exchange. You can also check like your profit and loss, your active trades, um, if there's any conditional orders, usually that's to do with your stop losses. Um, anything that's been filled recently, it will come up here and also your order history. Alrighty, everyone. I hope that actually explains a lot for you in terms of how to short and how to actually trade a trend. I've produced quite a bit of content on actually identifying trends in the past. So if you want to see more specific, um, or to actually investigate that a bit more with specific detail, please check out that other content I've produced. Um, also just to reiterate, use trend reversal indicators such as EMA flips or WMA flips to actually identify when the trend has changed. Then use price action itself or price structure to identify and confirm that the trend has reversed. And then once you confirm that, drop down to a lower time frame, which is at least one fourth of your high time frame or your trend setting time frame to actually then enter a short position based on local structure requirements. Never forget to put a stop loss or take profit on your trades. Mainly don't ever forget to use a stop loss. And also lastly, please, please, please do not use cross margin. Now in saying that, I hope you guys have a lovely weekend. It's going to be a beautiful day out here in Australia at the moment. Um, I'll definitely be trying to produce a bit more content coming forward. I've got exams this week. So after my exams and whatnot have been finished, I can start producing a lot more of this educational content. But until then, I hope you have a lovely week and I'll catch you later.